beginning at verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took up the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to the heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And we'll stop there. So again, I just wanted to read these because I want to really make the point. It wasn't just a promise to Abraham. It was to his seed forever. And God reaffirmed that through Isaac, and God reaffirmed that through Jacob. And when we read these promises, you'll notice that it doesn't just apply to the individual. It applies to their seed forever. So every one of these promises applies to the nation of Israel and to the Jewish people today. The same promise God made to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob applies to them today. <coughs> and remember back in Genesis uh, we read this, 12.3, uh, where God said, I bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. Uh, God wasn't just referring to Abraham, but he was referring to the descendants. And uh, we see a lot of the, the fulfillment of God's blessings and cursing. We see them throughout history. But... Um, <coughs> What we need to understand and what we really need to realize, that applies to you and me too. That applies to the church. Uh, we're commanded to bless Israel and the Jews. If we do, we are blessed. If we don't, we are cursed. It applies to me, it applies to you, it applies to the church, it applies to our nation. Um, we'll get to this more later too. It's hard for me not to get ahead of myself. But you can look at the history of our nation and you can see the difference in our nation when we bless Israel and when we don't bless Israel. You can see it. Uh, you may not take notice. You may, it may not jump right out at you, but we're going to cover some of this stuff, and you'll see just how God fulfills his word. <coughs> so prior to all of this, kind of like, I don't know how to put it, locking in, we read this earlier, um, Abraham's descendants spent 400 years in Egypt. They were brought out. They were delivered. Um, they were let go after God sent the plagues to Egypt. And he had told Abraham that this would happen. And it happened exactly as God said it would happen. God sent the plagues. They were let go. But what we need to look at is uh, their exodus from Egypt didn't occur until after a sacrificial lamb was slaughtered. They were not brought out of exile. They were not delivered. They were not set free until after a sacrificial lamb was slaughtered. And the blood was placed on the doorpost and on the lintel. And Passover was celebrated. This within itself is a prophecy. It's a foreshadowing. Uh, uh, it foreshadowed the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Uh, shedding his blood to deliver us from bondage, to set people free, um, to bring us out of captivity. And what we have to remember is he came through the Jews. He came through the nation of Israel. Um, but a lot of things we miss. Now, that's an obvious one to most Christians, that that lamb being slain and the blood applied to the door. It's obvious to most Christians that had foreshadowed Christ. But there's a lot of that in the Word of God that we miss. And it's a, it's a, how do I say this? It's a prophecy in actions, not just in words. This act that happened in Egypt prophesied the coming of Christ. 
It prophesied the deliverance uh, of those who would accept Christ. Just like the, um, the Israelites in bondage, if they applied that blood, they were spared. They did not die when the death angel came by and it prophesied what would be for us if the blood of Christ is applied. The death angel passes by, we are spared, we are set free. So after they were brought out, Moses led them out, and we know in the Bible, Moses as the lawgiver. So when they were brought out, they were given laws and ordinances through Moses that they were to adhere to in order to show themselves God's people. And that's what uh, a lot of people don't get. Why did God say, don't eat seafood to the Jews? Why did God say, um, do no work on the Sabbath? Why did God say, don't mix certain kinds of materials in your clothes? Why? Some of those things may seem odd, but why is it? Because it made them different. It set them apart. They didn't look like everybody else. They didn't act like everybody else. When you looked at them, you saw something different. That's why. Because they were God's chosen people. They were to be a holy people. They were to be a set apart people. And in order to fulfill that, they had to follow these things. And they were warned by Moses and the prophets throughout the Old Testament um, that failure to do these things would result in punishment. It would result in the wrath of God being poured out on them. And if you go through and read these things, uh, one of the punishments which is mentioned over and over and over is exile from their land. Uh, we can go back and we can read where the Babylonians took them out. Nebuchadnezzar took them out. We can see where the Assyrians took them out. And, and again, I just want to throw this in here. This also foreshadows something. We are to be a separate people. The Bible tells us as Christians to be a separate people. We are to be in the world but not of the world. The Jews were to be in a land that was surrounded by heathen nations. They were in the land, but they were not to be like those around them. And it's the same with us. And if they did not adhere to that, then there was punishment. And it's the same with us. Um, so not only do you see how God worked with Israel and, and uh, the prophecies and all these things, you can see how it carries through time. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am the Lord. I change not. And, and when you really look at this stuff and you really begin to understand it, it's so crystal clear that what God expects from his people, whether they be the Jewish people or whether they be Christians. Um, I hesitate because <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of myself and, and I don't want to get into things I'm going to talk about later um, but just like the Jews were disobedient to God and sometimes they were taken into exile sometimes like we've been talking about Gideon sometimes they weren't taken into exile but the Midianites came into their land and had control we can see that in the church we can see that in the world today in the church world today so as you see, not only uh, do these things show us the results of breaking God's covenant, but they show us that the same thing will happen to us if we break God's covenant. As I said, um, one of the punishments, and it, it, it's mentioned in a lot of the, the warnings that God gives them, was to be exiled, and we see that in the Bible with the Babylonians and the Assyrians. And these were relatively short exiles. Uh, they would be exiled for a while, they would cry out to God, they would repent, and they would be restored. Uh, let's look in the book of Leviticus, <coughs> chapter 26. Read this whole chapter when you got some time. I just want to read 
a little bit of it here. Beginning at verse 1 of Leviticus 26. It says, Ye shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbath, and rather to my sanctuary, I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then will I give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield your increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. I will give you peace in the land. You shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. I will rid you of beasts out of the land. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to read all of this. You read it when you get the chance, but I, I want to make a couple of points. Israel's never had peace. If God says if they keep his commandments and his statutes, he would give them peace in the land. Why do it as Israel had such turmoil and never be at peace? It's because they did not keep God's statutes. Uh, verse 40 of that chapter. I was talking about that they would be out they would be exiled, they would repent, God would save them. Look at verse 40 there. It says that they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers and with their trespasses, which they trespassed against me. And that also they have walked contrary unto me. And that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. That's the exile. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they then ex then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her Sabbath, while she lieth desolate without them. And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they despised my judgments, and because their soul abhorred my statutes, and yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. So you can see, uh, God's never going to cast them all completely. He says here, I'm going to punish them because they've rebelled against me, because they displeased me, because they didn't keep my commandments and my statutes. I'm going to send them into exile, but I'm not going to forget about them. He's never going to forget about them. That's what he's saying here. Um, though they have done all these things, I will not cast them off forever. I will remember the covenant I made with Abraham. I will remember the covenant that I made with Isaac. I will remember the covenant I made with Jacob. And he remembers that unto this day. And he will continue to remember that. They will have their land back. They will keep their land. They will be blessed at, uh, of God. Maybe hard to see that now or to believe that now. But God said it and it's going to happen. And we have those, like I told you, uh, the Babylonian captivity and the uh, Syrian captivity. We have those as examples. They're, they're smaller in scale in shorter periods of time. But we have those as examples that God keeps his word. And we see that in modern history. There were no um, Jews in that land for, what, thousands of years. There were no Jews there, but God did bring them back. And we'll get into more of that later as we go, but... Um, God will keep his promises and, and again it's good to know these, these things and see these things and, and it helps us to remember and to know and to understand that God does keep his promises in Deuteronomy chapter 30 beginning at verse 1 And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. Thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. 
thou and thy children, with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the uttermost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. So here he's saying, now again, I keep going back to this, but it's to make a point. He, he sent them into Babylonian captivity and brought them out of Babylon. He sent them into Assyrian captivity and brought them out of Assyria. If you notice in this scripture that I read, and we find it other places, he's talking about all parts of the earth. They were scattered throughout the entirety of the world. And he said, I will bring them back. That has happened. Uh, that happened after World War II. He started calling them back to the land from all parts of the earth. God kept his promise. God is keeping it. It's still going on. They're still coming back. And, and these promises, he promised to bring them back. He promised that, that he would draw them in. And he promised them that um, when he draw them in and, and gave them that land and put them back on that land, that he would multiply them, that he would bless the land, that he would bless them. We're not seeing that right now. They're not blessed right now as far as, you know, the condition that they're having to live in with everything that's going on with them. But it will happen just like the other things happen. That will happen. But... As I said, Israel was scattered. Um, they were taken into captivity. They continued to disobey. They were warned that this long lasting, I talked about, you know, for thousands of years, they were dispersed. They were warned that that was coming. Uh, and again, we, by looking at this, we can see uh, prophecy fulfilled. Look at um, Ezekiel chapter 5. Let me give you a few scriptures for that. Ezekiel chapter 5, beginning at verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God, This is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. And she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations, and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes, they have not walked in them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because you multiply more than the nations that are around you, and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, am against thee, and will execute judgments in the midst of thee in the sight of the nations. And I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like, because of all thine abominations. Therefore the fathers shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers, and I will execute judgments in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. Read more when you get the time, but this is talking about the big dispersion, uh, the, the long-term dispersion. And it's talking about the fathers eating the sons and the sons eating the fathers. Anybody know when this long-term dispersion started? Seventy A.D. That's when Rome came in and uh, they destroyed the temple and they began to drive out the Jews and to do all that. Um, when they were under siege, um, there is history to back up that there were cannibalistic things going on because they couldn't get food. It talks about the fathers eating the sons and the sons eating the fathers. And all these things happened. Uh, it, it, there's a lot of scripture that and I want to give them to you. I don't, don't want to wear you out with them, but I think it's important that we see these things. Uh, let's look at Matthew chapter 23. 